welcome you all to our service of matins for this 21st Sunday after the Pentecost. And today is also the day when we recognize the Lutheran Women's Missionary League and the work of the Women of Calvary in our congregation and give thanks for that. For those of you who are joining us online, if you want to get a copy of the bulletin to follow along with the service, go to our webpage, www.mountcalvarypeoria.org, and then you'll see where you can download from the media section of uh, the bulletin to follow along. For the rest of you all, if you take time to fill out one of the registration cards, drop it off in the offering plate when you depart, we appreciate your help with that. Everyone take a moment to wave at one another. You're now all officially at peace with each other in this room. Our opening hymn is 915, Today Your Mercy Calls Us, 915. I invite you to stand for the order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. I invite you to examine your conscience now in silence before the Lord according to his word, in your place in life. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we
Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory be to the power and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to is God with his angels and saints. O God, let us worship him. O God, let's sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful voice to our salvation. Let us come to the presence of the nation and Let us make a joyful voice to him. God with his angels and saints. O oh, come, let us worship him. You may be seated. I invite you to join me in the response of singing a portion of Psalm 90. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for your days and us, and for as many years as we have seen you. Let your work be shown to your servants, and your glorious power to their children. Office hymn is 870. Now that the daylight fills the sky.
for our younger friends this morning. We are in Mark chapter 10 still, and some of you may remember last week Jesus had blessed the little children, and the disciples got a little snippy with Jesus. They thought that Jesus was too important to take time with small children, but Jesus said, no, no, let the little children come to me, because I tell you, if you don't receive the kingdom like a little child, you will never enter it. And what we learned that that meant is that we have to receive the kingdom as a free gift. We don't do anything to earn it. We don't do anything to deserve it. We can't prove that we're worthy of it. It's a gift that Jesus gives us because he loves us. And today, we're going to see a guy who missed out on that message. He comes up to Jesus and says, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And we recognize right from the beginning that's the wrong question to ask, right? Do we do anything? To inherit life? No, right? It's a free gift. But Jesus loves this man, and he doesn't want to just say, oh, you're wrong, Mr. Man, and go away. Jesus wants to go ahead and help him understand his need for the gift of the kingdom. And so he says, look, if you think you can earn the kingdom, just go ahead and obey the Ten Commandments. Don't murder, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't commit adultery. Now, you all have learned enough in church and Sunday school that when we look at the Ten Commandments, can any of us say that we've obeyed those commandments the way that we ought to? No, right? We should know right away, oh my gosh, if that's what I have to do, I'm, I'm stuck out of luck. But this guy pipes right up and says, well, I've done all those things ever since I was a young man. So you think he's right, or is he really kind of out of his mind there, right? So Jesus says, okay, for you, there's just one thing you lack. There's one thing that you need to do in order to be able to have eternal life. You need to sell everything you have, give away your money to the poor, and then follow me. Sell everything you have. And that man thought about selling everything he had and giving away to the poor, and he realized he couldn't do it. He had a lot of stuff. He really liked the stuff he had, and he didn't want to give it all away. And he didn't want to give it all away and follow Jesus. And so he went away sad. And, and what Jesus helped him see was that he didn't really want to worship God with all of his heart, with all of his mind, with all of his soul. He really loved his stuff more than he loved God. Now, we don't hear the rest of the story on this. We never know whether or not the, the, the man repents and comes back. But the reminder to us is that we need to remember that we can't think our stuff is so important that we would never give it up. Now, Jesus doesn't tell us to give everything up and, and, and you know, give it away to the poor, but we need to recognize that God has to be the most important thing in our life, and whatever is required for us to follow him, that's what we need to do. So, that's what we're going to be talking about in the sermon, and that's what's going to go on in the gospel lesson. I'm going to get back to the service for the rest of the folks. First reading this morning is from the prophet Amos, the fifth chapter. Seek the Lord and live, lest he break out like a fire in the house of Joseph, and it devour with none to quench it for Bethel. O you who turn justice to wormwood and cast down righteousness to the earth. They hate him who reproves in the gate, and they abhor him who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and you exact taxes of grain from him, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe, and who turn aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, he is who prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Here ends the reading. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be Our second reading continues from the book of Hebrews, the third chapter. Take care, brothers lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. 
For we share in Christ if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. As it is said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not those who left Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he provoked for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? So we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. Here is the reading. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the gospel verse. Hallelujah. Bear one another's burdens. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark is recorded in the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell all that you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Forever, O oh God, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. The hymn is 683, Jesus, thy boundless love to me. 683.
And so I bid you all grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, and Jesus, looking at him, loved him. Now, that's the detail that often gets glossed over in this account of the rich young man, that Jesus loved him. He agaped him. He loved him with an intelligent, affectionate passion that freely gave to that man whatever he needed to flourish. And in this case, what that man needed for life and salvation was to get unstuck, to get unstuck from himself and to get unstuck from his possessions. You see, even though we'll get to Jesus' words about rich folk next week, this incident isn't really about how much that man had. A person could get just as stuck on having nothing as people often get stuck on having lots of things. No, this man's problem was with letting go of his stuff in order to follow Jesus and receive the kingdom. And let me add, this is not a general admonition to all of us to give up our positions to go trotting off after Jesus to a monastery or a desert retreat somewhere. No. We all have our callings in this life, and God has granted us the resources to carry out those callings and to serve our neighbors with the gifts that we receive. Jesus' word to this man is about selling all he's had. It was specific to him, to his spiritual condition relative to his wealth. And so we all have something to learn here, but not all that happens in this incident is for us. So let's go back to the beginning. This man ran up to Jesus and called him good teacher. No doubt he was meaning to flatter Jesus, meaning, you know, hey, Jesus, you're a good teacher. You really walk the walk and talk the talk. You know what you're talking about, unlike all those others over there. The man let Jesus know that he trusted him, and then he asked his question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, we catechized Lutherans already know that that was a wrong-headed question. We don't do anything to get eternal life. It is given us freely as a gift. But this man wasn't a Lutheran, and the religion of his time and place taught that we could, indeed we must, do much to prove ourselves righteous and thus know that we are part of that everlasting and eternal kingdom of God. But the question that plagued folks of that time who believed that they needed to earn heaven was how much, how, or, or how little did they need to do? Was there a minimum requirement of good that you had to do? What was the very least you could do and still be assured of getting in? And now you see that the question was even more disastrous, right? It's bad enough thinking that you can do something to get yourself in on eternal life. It's worse if you want to figure out how little you have to do to get in. Faith does not talk like that. Faith always wants to do more. Faith always wants to be more. And so you have this man, and you have his question, and the first thing that Jesus did was to brush aside the flattery. Why do you call me good? You see, even if Jesus was a good teacher in the sense of being better than all the others who were out there, that would not help this man. He could be taught all day, all year, and not get any closer to heaven. No, only one is good in the sense of being able to give salvation, and that one who can give salvation, of course, is God. If the man came to Jesus confessing that Jesus is God, then there'd be something to talk about. But if the man only considered Jesus a good teacher, there was work to be done, and Jesus loved him, and so Jesus went to work. So how do you get someone unstuck from the notion that her or his works are what get them into heaven? Simply by showing that person they can't do it, that there is no such thing as working hard enough, working purely enough, working long enough to prove oneself righteous. As long as a person thinks that their works get them somewhere with God, they're always going to cling to their works. Only when a person learns that their works aren't worth squat will they let go in order to receive God's mercy and pardon and grace as a pure gift. Don't get me wrong, it's not that believers don't do works. We're all called to serve God and our neighbors in Christ, but we don't look to our works to try and prove how good we are because only God is good. And he gives us goodness, but by different means. Anyway, Jesus called this man to examine his works. Don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't bear false witness, don't defraud anyone, honor your father and your mother. Now, any honest assessment of yourself recognizes that you stink at doing the law? I mean, sure, we can do it in part. You know, for instance, I'm assuming none of us gathered here this morning have murdered anyone recently. 
but do not murder goes farther than just that. Don't do anything to rob another person of knowing the giftedness of her or his life. You remember Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount saying that this means you must not be angry with your brother without cause. You must not say to him, Racha, which means worthless. You must not call him a fool. Anything you do, whether in your heart, in your mind, with your words, with your deeds, anything that you do that is hurtful to another is forbidden. According to Jesus, we all stand guilty of murder in one way or another. We have no hope of establishing our righteousness by the law. But as I said, this man who was talking with Jesus wasn't Luther. But apparently, he had not heard Jesus' Sermon on the Mount either. And he had grown up hearing from the rabbis that all that mattered was the letter of the law, not its substance. And so without batting an eye, the man said to Jesus, all these I've kept from my youth. It's a wonder that Jesus didn't laugh. But Jesus loved that man, and he wanted him to have life. And so Jesus had to uncover to him the work that he could not do and show him the kingdom that he could not enter by his own works. Sell all you have. Give to the poor. Come, follow me. Why? Because I'm good. I alone work the good, for I am God. Come to you to give you life. Come, follow me. It was the first commandment that Jesus set before that man. Have no other gods before me. Fear, love, and trust God above all things. Give up your pretend righteousness and receive from me true righteousness. Let go of your stuff and receive from me eternal life. And in a flash, that man knew he was a sinner. He suddenly knew that no works would be able to earn him eternal life. But because he loved his stuff, he was sorrowful for his heart. His heart told him that he ought to follow Jesus, that he ought to trust him. But that man kept looking back to all the stuff he had. His stuff made him who he was. His stuff paid the bills. His stuff put a roof over his head. His stuff put food on the table. It was a lot of stuff. How could he give that up? He was sorrowful. He knew he should leave it behind, but he couldn't. He knew he should love God above all else, but he couldn't. He knew he should follow Jesus, but he couldn't. And so he went away, and we never hear of him again. But Jesus loved him. Now, I like to believe that that man eventually did come back, but we don't know. Sometimes an unbelieving heart just misses out. So what's here for us this morning? Well, let me be obvious. No one is good but God only. That is, God alone works what is good, and when Jesus calls us to follow, it's because he is God, and he does the good for us. He loves us. Indeed, he gave up all that he had, left the glory of heaven, was found in fashion as a man, took the place of a slave, innocently suffered and sacrificed his life so that he could give us his righteousness, his holiness, his glory, his place as a beloved son, give all of that to us poor lost sheep. And this is eternal life, to know him and to follow Jesus and to receive his gifts, forgiveness, life, salvation, to receive everything from him and then to hand on what we've received to those around us. But here's the thing, we can only share in these gifts when we receive Christ's love as a free gift and confess our helplessness and need, which means that we have to let go of our works. That is, we have to stop holding on to whatever good we think we've done, whether it be with our family, with our friends, with our coworkers. We have to stop thinking about how good we've been or how good we can be in order to receive the true good from Christ. If you will, it's like a person holding tightly to the mast of a sinking ship while the Coast Guard holds out the hand to rescue. We have to let go of the mast in order to take that hand. And let me add that holding on to the mast, our supposed goodness, doesn't end up very well. We have to give up our works as the measure of our goodness so that we can receive Jesus' goodness. And we have to let go of self-righteousness, which is a little different than goodness. Self-righteousness is the self-made justice by which we think we deserve God's kingdom and by which we judge others. Now again, we're Lutherans and would never dream of saying that we deserve to go to heaven. But if polling data is to be believed, some do think that they do deserve heaven. 
They think that justice and fair play mean that you should be able to get into heaven even if you weren't perfect because, you know, who is? But as long as we think we deserve heaven, then we don't look to Jesus as the foundation of our salvation. We're stuck on ourselves once again. We miss the grace and love that the gift giver wants to give to us. So toss your righteousness aside and receive from Christ the pure righteousness that is his. Wear him as a garment. Be covered by him in baptism so that you may enter into that great feast that has no end. And having given up your goodness and your righteousness in order to receive Christ, to receive him and all that he is, hold on to your stuff with a, a light hand. Be ready to lose it all. Be ready to give it all up if it should come to that. And be ready to share with those you are called to serve and care for with those whose need is greater than yours. You can do this because you have all things in Christ. You can trust him to provide. For you know that he cares for you, and he knows what you need. But it isn't easy, right? Sometimes our stuff owns us. We spend all of our time trying to take care of it. We worry about it. We get anxious if we think that we don't have enough. But you have Christ, and he calls you to follow, and gives you life, and then he sends you forth. Stuff fades into the background when we see Jesus and inhabit the callings that he's given to us, seeing all around those whom we can serve, even as we are loved and served by Jesus. So my friends, follow Jesus. Rejoice over the treasure that you have in heaven, even Jesus the righteous one. Live in him, and then go love those around you. Amen. And now may that peace that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until the glorious day of his appearing. Amen. I invite you to stand as we join together singing the today. We praise you, O God, we acknowledge you to be the Lord. All the earth now worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. Cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of your glory. A glorious company of the apostles praise you. The good fellowship of the prophets praise you. The noble army of martyrs praise you. The holy church throughout all the world does acknowledge you. The Father of infinite majesty, your adorable and true and only Son, also the Holy Ghost of the Fortress. Oh, Lord, have mercy upon us, have 
Sunday. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Lutheran Women Missionary League Sunday calls us to again believe and witness that all that we have given to us by the mercies of God through the work of Jesus Christ, in fervent gratitude for the Savior's dying love and his blood-bought gift of redemption. We dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have. As redeemed children of God, the Lutheran women in mission give thanks to God that we are his. We are held by God's word. We are inspired to share his gospel. We are surrounded by his grace. So let us pray. Father, on this day, we not only thank you for the work of the Lutheran women's missionary lead, but also for the work they have helped to support those preparing for ministry as teachers or pastors. They have ministered to families in grief with funeral luncheons and meals. They have supported one another in fellowship around the world and have ministered to the children of this congregation. They have collected food for those in need, visited shut-ins with reminders of God's care, served meals to the congregation, and so much more. We thank you for showing us an aspect of Christ's love in their devotion, and pray that you would continue to bless their work for the building up of this congregation and the extension of your kingdom through Christ Jesus. Your Lord and the Holy Spirit are one God, now and forever. And I invite the women of the congregation who are willing to join in the Lutheran Women Missionary League pledge. In fervent gratitude for the Savior's dying love and his love on the gift of redemption, we dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have, and in obedience to his call to workers in the harvest fields, we pledge him our willing service wherever and whenever he has need of us. And we continue with the prayers of the church. Jesus Christ, whose grace always proceeds and follows us, help us to forsake all trust in earthly gain and to find in you our heavenly treasure. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, your mercies are new to us every morning, and you abundantly provide for all our wants of body and soul. Give us, we humbly pray, your Holy Spirit, that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness toward us, give thanks for all your benefits, 
and cheerfully serve you. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Bless the leaders of our land, that we may be a people at peace among ourselves and a blessing to the other nations of the earth. Grant that we may choose trustworthy leaders, contribute to wise decisions for the general welfare, and serve you faithfully in our generation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And here's as we bring our concerns to you in our hearts. Comfort the family and friends of Laurel Van Gundy as they mourn her death and strengthen them in Christ's triumph over death and hell. We give thanks for the healthy birth of Titus James to Ben and Janessa Lampton. Pray health, grace, and faith for all. Speed recovery for all who are in need of healing. We especially pray for Dale Brinkman, Rebecca, Isaac Benders, Paula Horst, Bill Rube, Sally Leon, Ethan Horman, Denise Shivers, Ron Achterberg, Ardeen Ruckel, Patty Coy, Katie Taggy, Gary Ruckel, Carol Lockridge, Trinity Foote, Ross Pauli, Lil, Mul Lil Mulvaney, and Jessica Shu. Continue to grant recovery and strength to Robert Marshall, Carolyn Pauli, Kathy Lentz, Diane Freeman, Shirley King, and Sue Elder. Watch over Ginny Likes, Jane Millard, Michael Brown, Sherry Crozier, Rebecca Myers, John Taggy, Nylon, Kevin Gartley, Ilsa Adams, Bob Burden, Donna Kirkman, Nancy Greyer, Nora Rossman, Trisha Smith, Nan Berunda, Roger Woolsey, and Jane Wood. Continue to strengthen Harry Coy, uphold Lori Livingston, grant her strength and good health, bless and keep Jennifer Lentz, give healing and strength to Ann Jacobson. Strengthen Marty Likes and Bill Barr, grant health and healing to Hugh, Jessica Horman, Linda Perone, PJ Camacho, Pam Barr, Earl Boyette, and Mary Dowds. Give continued healing to Miguel Bulwark, Carol Hoffman, Ms. Ritter, and Natalie Brusick. Give relief to Mark Manthe, give healing to Brian Kelly, Virginia David Shirley, and Deacon Julian. Grant recovery to Mark, grant health and strength to Anne Bullock and her babies, Chris, Patty, Jim, and Gary. Also watch over Ryan and Carol Stetzler, Bill Parrott, Maureen and her children, Cheryl, Gloria, Sally, and Steve. Bless and keep Jenny Bradley, Theo Norman, Rebecca, Tanisha, Jenny, John, Constance, Linda, and Kenneth, and grant them all wellness. Speed healing for Pam and Dolores, bless the Tompkins family and Clara. Grant grace to Jackie and her family. Give relief to Kathy and Will. Grant strength and healing to Josh, Bill, Bray Lynn, and Gabby. Give health to Jim. Be with all travelers to give them safe journeys. Also watch over Shirley, Max, Neil, Shane, Faith, Jenna, Steve, Eric, Gloria, and Phyllis. Give grace and healing to Christiane and Ruth. Be with Luann and Shelley Cooper and Yasmin. Be with Cheryl Freyricks, Bob Showery, Mike Solis, the Cisneros family, Kathy Rebel, Lori Casper, Karen Stabler, Chris Pacey, Brett Parrott, Dan Moran, Bruce Taggy, Chris Walker, Pastor Matthews, Diane Norris, Tommy, Scott Wilson, Pastor Drews, Teresa Carrick, Deb Alley, Marsha, Delcy Lane, Becky Richards, Dave, Olivia Bradley, Sharon Rumbold, Sherry Emberton, Sandra, Larry, Rod, Ginny, David, Shannon, Ward, Michael, Dale, Kathy, Gordon, Maureen, Pastor Neiman, Mary, Ethan, and Gail, and Jonathan, to give them all strength according to your will. Support and comfort all those recovering from disasters of various sorts, especially those affected by the hurricanes Milton and Helene. Be with all those who are working to bring relief and recovery in every place where they are needed. We pray that you bring peace and justice to the nations and keep the scourge of war far off. Stay the hand of the aggressor and comfort and guard the innocent. Grant peace to Israel and Palestine, bring an end to the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Heal the divisions that bring bitterness to our own nation. We especially have implore your grace to bring an end to all ethnic and racial bigotry, grant understanding, grace, and charity to all. We lift up all who have suffered violent attack this last week, praying that you grant mercy, healing, faith, and justice, O Lord, and bring us peace. Watch over Pastor Hake and his family, bless their service, bless the ministry of Concordia Lutheran School, give your grace and support to all learning situations. 
be with our synod and all of its officers, Matthew, our synod of the president, Michael, our district president, and all synod and district officials, that they may be guided by your word to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Grant stability, faith, and hope to all who are struggling in this economy. Bless the people of Haiti as they struggle to recover and establish a stable civil life. Grant shelter and protection to all refugees, especially those displaced by the conflict in Syria. And finally, we ask you to send your spirit of peace to the Sudan, Somalia, Myanmar, Venezuela, Afghanistan, Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria, Burkina Faso, Nagorno-Karabakh, the Middle East, especially Gaza, Iraq, Egypt, Syria, and Yemen, and all places torn by war or civil strife. O oh, Lord, in your mercy. We also ask that while our nation continues to live with peril, and while many remain in harm's way, that you would watch over us and show your mercy to all who are in danger or who suffer in any way. Comfort those who mourn, heal those who are injured, give wisdom and humility to those in authority. Continue to be with Derek Foote, Alex Zook, Elizabeth Auer, Zeke Garrison, and all deployed and active duty military personnel and their families. Protect all innocent civilians everywhere and bring the wicked to justice. Defend the righteous and lead all to repent of evil and seek your peace. We know that all things are in your hands, Father, and we ask that you bring justice and establish fair government according to your good and perfect will. O Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Closing hymn is 694, Thee will I love, my strength, my power.
services 